I think we're going to be ready in about a minute. Okay? Okay. I'm going to say it's just um, at least 40 U.S. Marines are reported dead. Um, Ten French soldiers were killed after two car bomb explosions went off. Um, Jim Clancy is in Beirut and has this report live. Okay. Well, we, that's what we're getting of the wires, car bomb, remote. Oh, okay. I'll just say, I'll just say two explosions. I'll just say two explosions then. Just two explosions. Okay. Yes, I can. Have been totally. Okay. All right. We're okay. We're getting we're getting ready to go on now, and I'll just ask you to give give you, me your assessment of what's what's happened. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, I don't have my IFB plugged in. Okay. 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 Um, let me just plug my IFB in. Okay. Yes. We interrupt this program to bring you this uh, bulletin. This just in from Beirut. At least 40 U.S. Marines and 10 French soldiers are dead after two explosions. We have a report from Jim Clancy, who's in Beirut. And Jim, I'd like for you to give me your assessment of the situation um, there now. The only word, Gwen, to assess the, uh, the situation here with is grim. Uh, moans could be heard coming from beneath the rubble, both at the French building and at the U.S. Marine compound near the airport where two bombs went off between minutes of one another. The Marine bomb went off at about 6.20 a.m. That building is a multiple-story building that houses the battalion landing team, which is a 1,200-man ground unit of the uh, Marines amphibious uh, unit that's stationed near Beirut Airport. Uh, Marines were working frantically to try to pull their comrades out of the rubble. We could see bodies coming out but there were, no, there were no complete reports available on the scene about exactly what had happened or how many people may have become victims of this. There are very many wounded and still beneath the rubble of both the American compound and the French compound. Uh, we suspect that there are maybe as many as hundreds of people that are still buried there. Uh, At this can point, it is not clear what uh, kind of a bomb was used. There are reports on the streets that apparently in the French building at least, which was similar in size and structure to the American building, that dynamite may have been placed around key places on the building. Uh, whether that was done with the American building, we do not know. It does not appear to have been a car bomb, although we cannot rule that out at this point. The damage is total. There is nothing left. We are talking about multiple story office buildings. All you can see is cement pile layer upon layer, rescue teams working frantically, trying to use cranes and anything that they can, including their bare hands, to pull away the debris that is covering the men who still may be trapped alive beneath all of this. Gwen? Is there any idea as to the number of casualties involved as far as the U.S. Marines are concerned at this point? We're Gwen, getting here at the figure... I, I hesitate to even hazard a guess. I can only tell you that it depends on how many people were in those buildings at the time because anyone that was in that building uh, their chances of surviving were not very good and I know of no other way of putting it uh, we saw some wounded being taken out but I saw many more dead people uh, being taken out by ambulance uh, the scene is uh, just terrible it now, is indescribable is this the building that houses the multinational peacekeeping force all of them 
There are two buildings involved, Gwen, and perhaps we should make this clear. Of course, the French contingent and the Marines contingent are two of them. There is also a, a third contingent, the uh, Italians. These two bombs attacked the headquarters of the Americans and the headquarters of the French, located in different sectors of the city. The Marines, of course, are located at the airport. The French are located uh, perhaps five kilometers away in West Beirut. And both buildings were destroyed within moments of one another. The questions that are being asked now are how th these things were done, because uh, security seemed to be so tight. Uh, feelings are running quite high among both the French and the American Marines that are on the scene. While we were there, the Marines were ordered to lock and load. Lebanese army units surrounded the area in order to provide more protection. All of this follows a night of heavy fighting in the areas of Souk El Garb and around the airport. But uh, there was certainly no indication that anything on this magnitude was going to happen. If you saw the pictures of the U.S. Embassy and what happened there, you can only believe that this is worse. You mentioned that there may have been dynamite involved. Where did you um, get that report from, and why would you think that dynamite was involved in setting off the explosions? Well, there were reports on the scene at the French compound that's located in West Beirut that explosive charges, uh, perhaps that's a better way of putting it, were placed not in one place, but around the building in strategic positions that would bring the entire building down, and that is exactly what it did, Gwen. It brought the entire building down, one floor on top of the other. There is, there is nothing left of the American uh, headquarters or the French headquarters but piles of rubble. Could you describe um, anything about the kinds of security that um, um, the uh, peacekeepers use to um, safeguard it against this kind of thing? Are there any kind of security measures? I find it almost impossible to get into the French compound, the American compound, very heavily guarded, two or three uh, different uh, routes that would, uh, or checkpoints rather, that you would have to go through before there was any availability uh, to these buildings. Uh, very heavy security, barbed wire all around both of them, sandbagged bunkers with 50 caliber machine guns. It seems impossible that someone could get in there and do this. Uh, until we can find out more information, uh, it's probably better not to uh, uh, try to extrapolate or to project what happened here. But I can tell you that uh, the security was by no means lax. All right, Jim, thank you very much. That was Jim Clancy reporting live from Beirut, where there has been a tragedy. We know that at least 40 U.S. Marines have been killed, 10 French soldiers, and we'll have uh, more details for you as they become available to us. Jim, we're off now.